Hey y'all, welcome back to Dots and Beyond. My name is Beth and today we're going to do something a little different as we start approaching 2023 and getting ready to set up our bullet journals. I'm going to start doing a series called Six Setups and today we are starting with the index. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the index is a hotly contested topic, I believe, in the creative bullet journaling community. Some of us use them, some of us do not use them. I keep two journals, as many of you know. I have a personal bullet journal, which does not have an index, and I have a work journal, which absolutely relies on the index. So I do use one, just not necessarily in the creative journal that you see all of the time. But again, as we start getting ready to set up our bullet journals, I thought I would start just a quick series, um, not too overwhelming, of just six setups and we'll carry on from index to keys to weeklies and dailies and monthlies over the next few weeks um, as we start getting ready for the end of the year. So let's go ahead and look at some of these index. So this is the first one that I have. It's a very standard index. I have some washi down either side. Um, and here at the top we have the future log or the things that you would put in the front of your journal, the various collections and stuff. And then jumping right into the monthlies, which I have just highlighted lightly with pink to designate one from the other. And this is just a very standard index with enough space for you to roll to the next page. And then you would probably need the next one as well. You probably need two spreads for this particular index. This next one is separated out by collection. So if you're that type of person that doesn't want to look at things sort of linearly in a calendar mode, you would rather see where all of your collections are living at any one time, this is the index for you. So here on the left side is everything that is planning related. These are collections trackers and then I just put a food log. It could be any sort of collection that you always have in your journal or any sort of page, maybe financial. If you want to jump from month to month and look at finances, that'd be another great column for you. And then here at the top are just the ones from the initial setup. And then again, each one is separated by month and the pages that those would land on depending on the type of things that you are keeping from month two months. Like for me, I typically do a habit tracker as well as a sleep tracker. So those trackers would always show up. So if that's where it lives and you need to find it all the time, you can always look back to that page number and find that singular, singular, excuse me, collection that you built in the middle of a month. Next up is one that I have been testing in my work journal. For those that know, I am an event manager. Pretty much everything I do is date oriented. Um, and so this is a combination of future log and index. And it's really going to depend on how much space you need for your regular monthly appointments, things that you're scheduling in advance so that you know where they are, and then how much space you would need for your index. And if you're the type of person that always sets up the exact same pages every single month and in the exact same order, then this might be the index for you because you're going to know exactly how many spaces you need down here at the bottom. But at the top we have our standard future log in a linear format as opposed to going the horizontal way we have the vertical view and then we have what would be what you're scheduling in advance and then at the bottom would be your index for that particular month and where those things live um, and again this would just change depending on um, how many pages you have so if you're going to those people that always has the same number of pages for every single month in your journal then this is definitely a great index to explore especially if you don't use all of this space for your appointments and events i mean if maybe you feel like you're wasting space you, you can definitely use this particular layout and again i have just framed it with some washi tape this particular washi tape set that i have been using includes these two as well as some others. I picked up in Michael's in the very early days of my bullet journaling, but pink and gray is not necessarily one of the color schemes that I stick with very often, and so I decided I needed to use that up because it's starting to get where it's not as tacky. You know, your washi tape does wear out, and so we're just using some of that throughout this setup for the six setups of the indexes. These are singular page indexes, or they could definitely spread onto multiple pages depending on how you want it. This one is set up very much like the Alistair method um, in doing your tasks or that sort of a thing, in that we have again separated out the categories. So plan, track, those different things, mood. So here would be your index, those things that you put at the beginning of your journal, and then again broken out 
by month and your planning. And it's just a different way to eyeball your index all on one page. And then to really knock it down to a singular page and go very minimal. This is a type of spread that is for the person that really needs to know just where their planning stuff is. Maybe you just need to jump to January. You know your collections are between this page and week one. And so you just need to get to January. So this would be just sort of the planning one. You put in where the beginning of your month is and then where each one of your weeks falls. And then you know that whatever collection you have in January falls right after page 11 and whatever collections you have in February fall right after page was it, 28. I can't read my own handwriting, 29. <laughs> and that's another way that you could do an index where you really just jump to where you need to jump. And then the last one that I have in this particular version is another one that separates out the collections from the months, but it also includes being able to track what sort of a theme you put on your monthly. So here we have the collections and Fairmere is coming into camera to say hello. Hi there, Fairmere. And then you have your months down at the bottom. So we have January with a theme of winter and this lovely cat's tail, look at this. Um, and the page number that January would start on, February, a theme of Paris, and the page that it would start on. Now what you could do is flip these two boxes around so that you have your 12 rows for your months and then put the collections below it in case they need to flow to the next page and keep the next page open if you needed more space than this for the collections. And as Fairmere exits the screen, I hope that you got some ideas on how maybe you can set up an index or if you're stuck in a rut on your index, um, some different ideas that you could try to see if a different type of index works for you. If you are not subscribed already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Click that little notification bell so you're notified the next time I upload a six setup video. Thank you so much for watching and we will catch you in the next one.